Hi, it's Paul here from selfhelpforlife.com and today I'm going to talk about some of the different parts of your brain and their functions. Now I'm going to focus on the parts of your brain that affect your psychology, your mindset and your emotions and also by knowing some of the terminology, these different parts of the brain, you will know what they mean if you uh, come across them in other videos or other books that you're reading. But more importantly, you'll begin to understand how your brain works. So when you have an experience, maybe an emotional experience or a fear response, you'll start to know which part of the brain that's coming from. And if you have another experience where maybe you forget your lines in an important speech or presentation, or you just forget something important, you begin to understand what actually happens in the brain, the blood flow, um, so you know what's going on there. And that will help you have more choice, uh, maybe start to understand ways that you can control your brain in different ways. So the first part of your brain is the prefrontal cortex. And this is the very front part of the brain that's just literally behind your eyes and your forehead. It's what, when we think about our brain, it's probably what we almost sense when we're thinking. It almost feels like it's coming from that area. And the prefrontal cortex is part of the frontal lobe, which is the larger front part of your brain, which is part of the neocortex, which is the whole of the top part of your brain. And the prefrontal cortex is responsible for thinking and goal setting, specifically goal setting and prediction of outcomes. So working out what we want to achieve, those sorts of things. Also planning and organizing, so how we plan our time, how we plan our day, how we plan our life and how we organize things as well. It also determines what's good and bad and what is right and wrong, dependent on our beliefs around those things. It also helps us predict the future consequences of our actions, so what we do and how they affect other people and our life. It's part of the expression of your personality. So the way you express yourself comes also from the prefrontal cortex. And it also helps you evaluate different options and make decisions. So the whole decision making process comes from the prefrontal cortex. Now a very important part of the prefrontal cortex is moderating social behavior by suppressing emotional urges and unhelpful thoughts. So when we're in a social situation, the way we behave tends to change dependent on the people around us so that we fit the situation and we fit in because that's an important uh, thing about us as humans is the ability to fit in. So all those functions in the prefrontal cortex, they're very familiar to you and they're what we would probably describe in psychology and self-help as our conscious mind or that left brain reasoning type of the brain. Now before I cover some of the other parts of the brain which are more emotional, I'm just going to talk a bit about the limbic system which is the uh, nervous system that really uh, all those parts of the brain uh, reside in. So the limbic system is really your centre for emotional responsiveness. It's where motivation comes from, also where memory formation comes from and all the mechanisms that keep us safe. So we have sensory perception, time perception, that all comes from this area, our attention span, our consciousness all comes from the limbic system as well. And the main parts are the amygdala, the hippocampus and the hypothalamus. So they're the main parts um, of the limbic system and they're all very, very closely connected to the prefrontal cortex that I was talking about a moment ago. And what's very interesting is exercises such as meditation and mindfulness improve the connection between the prefrontal cortex and the limbic system. So it's strengthening those neural pathways, those neural highways between these two different parts of the brain. So that's a very scientific reason why meditation, mindfulness is really good for you. So let's talk about the amygdala now. I've talked about the amygdala in a few other videos. So this was actually where the inspiration for this video came from. I thought it'd be really good to actually just talk about these parts of the brain in more detail. So the amygdala is the emotional processing part of your brain. So you receive incoming sensory input and the amygdala is what gives you an emotional response. And it's like your early warning system for either a perceived threat or even an actual threat. And it's a much more unconscious part of the brain. Now there are two parts to the amygdala. There's the left side, which deals with responses of a positive 
and negative nature and the right part which deals predominantly with negative emotional responses and one of the important roles of the amygdala is attention focusing so focusing and knowing what is the most important sensory stimuli to focus on so it helps and that could be good stimuli or bad stimuli and that might uh, understand why at times um, you're very very focused on one specific thing that could be good it could be like being in love where you're completely focused on that other person or a really engaging conversation where your attention is completely focused on that person or it could be some kind of fear response um, where your mind is completely focused on getting away from that threat so the amygdala really holds the attention and what you focus on and it, it, it determines from all the different things that are going around that we're experiencing with our senses it works out what to focus your attention on uh, and it also activates the stress response for dangerous stimuli and I'll talk a bit about that more in a moment uh, another interesting thing the amygdala does is it evaluates facial expressions and it then sends that information to the prefrontal cortex so when you notice someone happy smiling at you, it's the amygdala that picks that up first and then you get that thought about that person. Now an important function of the amygdala is the release of hormones and these hormones can alter the cognitive processing of the prefrontal cortex. So part of that is taking blood flow away from the prefrontal cortex into the more of the emotional parts of your brain and body and this is why sometimes you might forget an important phrase in a speech um, or something important that you've learned you just forget at that particular moment in time when you're under stress that's because the blood has actually moved away from the prefrontal cortex more into the amygdala and the emotional part of the brain and it also activates your body via the hypothalamus and we'll talk about that in a moment now the amygdala is especially activated by surprising, ambiguous or uncertain situations. And what it does is it looks at memories when accessing any kind of incoming sensory input. And it determines from past experience whether that's a stressor or not. So this is why the amygdala is quite affected by life experiences, past life experiences and your beliefs behind those. So if there's a belief there that that situation or that emotion, that um, sensory input is uh, stressful or bad in some way, then that's going to activate some kind of emotional response. And that typically is what we call the fight, flight or freeze response. So we either fight whatever the threat is, uh, and this comes back to you know, primeval days when we had physical threats every day. So fighting something, running away from it or freezing okay so they're the three responses and what happens when you're in that kind of stressful situation that fight flight or freeze response is the amygdala hijacks the prefrontal cortex and as I mentioned that's partly because it takes blood away from the prefrontal cortex and it takes that to the limbic system okay so it hijacks that and that's really important that it does that um, because that means the amygdala can take control in a, a stressful situation so that you instinctively do the right thing rather than having to think about it. Now the amygdala processes information milliseconds earlier than the prefrontal cortex. So if a memory matches an incoming stimulus, so basically the brain says I know about this, then it will act automatically without involving the prefrontal cortex. It's like an instinctive response. However, if the amygdala does not perceive a match to an incoming stimulus, so basically it's a new experience, then it will take direction from the prefrontal cortex in terms of what to do about that and how to respond. Now it's interesting that um, depression is linked to an enlarged amygdala. So there is a link between how often the amygdala is activated, and if it's activated a lot then it gets enlarged over time, and the severity of depression. So Depression can be measured quite scientifically these days by the different areas and the different sizes of the brain. So let's move on now to the hippocampus. So the hippocampus is responsible for the formation of memories. It creates structured interactions between the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex. And these happen during slow brainwave sleep. And that's part of the process of consolidating long-term memories while we sleep. 
and would be responsible for dreams as well. And the hippocampus is also like your brain's Google search engine. So it allows fast and efficient searching of memories from the prefrontal cortex and other parts of the neocortex to help assess and plan things. And the hippocampus is also important for learning, especially physical tasks. Okay, so it's very much involved in how you learn something physical, how you do those steps consciously so that over time they become unconscious. And chronic stress negatively affects the hippocampus. And also depression, besides affecting the amygdala, enlarging the amygdala, it can reduce the volume of the hippocampus by anything from 8 to 19%. So again, real physical changes in the brain can happen as a result of the kind of consistent thoughts and feelings that you have. Now let's talk about the thalamus. This is the central hub of your brain and it receives outside information from your senses and forwards that to other areas of the brain. So that could be the amygdala, it could be the prefrontal cortex. And it also helps manage motor and cognitive functions. So finally, the hypothalamus. Now this takes input from your senses via the thalamus and it's closely connected to the amygdala and the hippocampus and it helps control and monitor a number of vital processes and these include your metabolism so how quickly you digest food uh, your circadian rhythms so that's what affects when you feel sleepy and when you feel wide awake uh, it also affects the quality of your sleep as well so the amount of deep sleep and, and things like that uh, it tells you when you're thirsty uh, it controls your body temperature and your feeling of hunger as well so that's a bit more unconscious, a bit more around uh, how it affects your body, but has a psychological input from what you perceive from your senses through that. So they are some of the fascinating parts of the brain that are important from a psychological or self-help thinking and emotions perspective. I really enjoyed researching this video, so I hope you enjoyed watching it and got some good value from this. And hopefully now you understand more about how your brain works and the different parts of your brain as well. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and do leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. And do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the bell notification. That way you will always be notified when I release future videos just like this one, which are typically every week at the moment. And if you haven't already, do check out my website. That is selfhelpforlife.com. On there, you'll find the written versions to these videos and also links to my social media and podcast as well. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I look forward to sharing more great content with you very soon. Bye for now.